I want to look at the action potential or the chemical electrical stimulus that goes down the nerve. But first off, in order to understand the change, you have to understand the basic resting, which is called the resting potential. So there's a little video here uh, to help you explain it. Oh, oh, oh biolography. It's my favorite part of the show. The sodium potassium pump was discovered in 1950 by a Danish medical doctor named Jens Christian Skoo, who was studying how anesthetics work on membranes. He noticed that there was a protein in cell membranes that could pump sodium out of the cell. And the way he got to know this pump was by studying the nerves of crabs. Because crab nerves are huge compared to human's nerves and are easier to dissect and observe. The crabs are still small, so he needed a lot of them. He struck a deal with a local fisherman and over the years studied approximately 25,000 crabs, each of which he boiled to study their fresh nerve fibers. He published his findings on the sodium potassium pump in 1957 and in the meantime became known for the distinct odor that filled the halls of the Department of Physiology at the university where he worked. Forty years after making his discovery, Sku was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. And here's what he taught us. Turns out, these pumps work against two gradients at the same time. One is the concentration gradient, and the other is the electrochemical gradient. That's the difference in electrical charge on either side of the cell's membrane. So the nerve cells that Skoo is studying, like nerve cells in your brain, typically have a negative charge inside relative to the outside. They also usually have a low concentration of sodium ions inside. The pump works against both of these conditions, collecting three positively charged sodium ions and pushing them out into the positively charged sodium ion rich environment. To get the energy to do this, the protein pump breaks up a molecule of ATP. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, an adenosine molecule with three phosphate groups attached to it. So when ATP connects with the protein pump, an enzyme breaks the covalent bond on one of those phosphates in a burst of excitement and energy. The split releases enough energy to change the shape of the pump so that it opens outward and releases three sodium ions. This new shape also makes it a good fit for potassium ions that are outside the cell so the pump lets two of those in. Okay, so let's look at this in terms of what it's doing. So here is the axon membrane, so or the nerve cell. This is inside, and it is slightly negative. Um, and it is negative of about minus 70 millivolts. It's not so much the number that's important other than it is uh, negative. Now realize that one little A battery is one volt. So this is million or a thousand times of that. So now you wonder, you may ask, how do you get a negative inside when you're just moving positives? And the movement of the positives has to do with the fact that three sodium move out for every two potassium that move in. So as a result, every time the pump goes, you have one more positive outside. So really what you've done is you end up with relatively more positives outside. And since there's more positives outside, that means there is relatively, it's negative inside. Now also realize that this requires ATP in order for the pump to move. So this is very important. Because of this pumping action, you have set up a gradient. The gradient is negative inside. The gradient has more sodium outside and more potassium inside. So as a result, you have this buildup of charge. And it's because of this buildup of charge, you will end up um, setting up what's called the resting potential. So this is resting. And it's very important that you realize with resting, it is slightly negative inside. And since there is polarized, since there's a negative and a positive, this situation is called polarized. Okay. Now that you understand that, I'm going to flip to another video. And one more thing I want you to realize, in this nerve, in this cell membrane, there will also be gates or channels. Um, so there is a sodium channel with a gate on it. And then there's a potassium channel 
with a gate on it. And these gates are controlled due to um, changing of the voltage. So these are called voltage chain or voltage gated channels. Okay, I'm going to flip to another video here. Okay, so now we're going to look at the neuron. So imagine here is our neuron and we have our inside is slightly negative and the outside is slightly positive. Electrical current that travels along dendrites or axons due to ions moving through voltage gated channels in the neuron's plasma membrane. Voltage gated channels open and close in response to an electrical voltage, so they are affected by changes in electrical charge around them. When a neuron is at rest, a charge difference is maintained between the inside and outside of the cell. This charge difference is produced and maintained largely by active transport using sodium potassium pumps. The pumps send sodium ions out of the cell and bring potassium ions in. Okay, so this is what we talked about. The pumping moves the sodium out, making a, a larger amount of sodium outside and a larger concentration of potassium inside. And all this is maintained by the pumps. While other channels allow some flow of potassium ions back out of the cell, the sodium ions cannot easily get back in to replace the lost positive charges. Okay, so this is resting potential now. This is where we are at. The overall result is that the exterior of the cell has a net positive charge and the interior has a net negative charge. The difference in charge between the interior and exterior of the cell is called the resting membrane potential. A nerve impulse begins when a stimulus disturbs the plasma membrane on a dendrite, causing sodium channels to open. Sodium ions flow into the cell, lessening the charge difference at that location. If the change is enough, it will cause nearby voltage-gated sodium channels to open. This allows so many sodium ions to flood into the cell at that location that the membrane there is depolarized, with the local region inside the cell having a net positive charge and the outside of the cell having a net negative charge. Okay, so now we will look at the first step of the action potential. And the first step of the action potential is once there is enough stimuli, our sodium gates open. and the outside of the cell having a net negative charge. Okay, so let's look at what we've got here. So we have our sodium channels that open. Now, remember, initially, we, because of pumping, we had a large concentration of sodium outside. Now, with the opening of these channels, the sodium will flow in by a concentration gradient. Now, because you have a positive moving in, it's now positive inside. So it's no longer polarized. So this stage is called depolarization. And in depolarization, the, the voltage, Asian, imagine it says Asian, the voltage now gets to be about plus 40. And don't be too concerned about the voltage itself. It's more that it's just positive. So now it is positive. And because of this positive change, it will affect these potassium channels. So let's have a look there. This affects neighboring voltage-gated sodium channels, which then open, moving the depolarization along the membrane. This moving depolarization is called an action potential. Changes occur behind the action potential to restore the resting membrane potential. The voltage-gated sodium channels close and voltage-gated potassium channels open. This allows a rapid flow of potassium ions out of the cell, repolarizing the membrane so that the inside is again negative and the outside positive. This is followed by use of sodium-potassium pumps to fully restore the resting membrane potential 
and to reestablish proper concentrations of sodium and potassium ions inside. Okay, let's look at what is going on. So after the sodium channels close, you are now at about a positive 40 voltage. So because it's at a positive voltage, and this is millivolts, because of that, that closes the, the, the sodium and opens the potassium. Now, realize that there was a large concentration of potassium inside because of the pumping. This results in the potassium moving out. So we now have it becoming more positive outside, meaning it becomes relatively negative inside. And this area is called repolarization because you've taken and you've moved the potassium charges out. Then once this is done, the pumps kick back in again and everything gets restored. Establish proper concentrations of sodium and potassium ions inside and outside of the cell. Okay. So that is how the cell propagates. Okay, let's look at this again by summarizing in the textbook. There's a resting potential, then there's depolarization. After depolarization is re, the action potential, repolarization. Sorry, D, let's look at that again. Depolarization, action potential, repolarization. And there's a bit we didn't talk about yet called the refractory period. And the refractory period really is everything reset again. Okay, so let's look at it. We talked about the resting potential. Because of the resting potential, there is, because of the sodium potassium pumps, there's more sodium being pumped outside. So you rest with it being slightly negative inside. Things to pay attention to. The exterior has large amounts of sodium. So the sodium is on the outside, higher concentration. The interior is very high in potassium. Okay, so it is slightly or higher concentration inside. Now, this is called the resting potential. When there is the stimulus coming down, these gates open, the potassium gates open, sorry, the sodium gates open. And because the sodium gates open, sodium moves from a place of high concentration to a place of low concentration. So sodium enters and this is depolarization because it's no longer polarized. Okay, let's look at part three. Because of this depolarization, it opens the gates and will move adjacent or open adjacent gates and moves the um, nervous impulse down or propagates the action potential. And that's how the, the action potential or the stimuli moves because of these sodium gates opening. Now, once it gets positive inside, let me just move this a little bit more. There we go. Once it gets positive inside, it will open potassium gates. And the potassium gates open, and by concentration gradient, the potassium flows out. And it is now negative again. So it is repolarized. Okay, repolarized. Good. Then there is a bit called a refractory period. And in the refractory period, basically nothing's working because everything's resetting. So in the refractory period, um, everything's set up. The potassium and sodium are on the wrong side. The membrane is uh, polarized, but they're in the wrong spot. So the pumps need to set up again and the pumps will then restore. So in the refractory period, it doesn't work because 
you need to restore everything. And because of the fact that it can't go backwards because it's in the refractory period, the action potential only goes in one direction. And that's very important. And that is how the action potential works. Very tricky, but pay attention to how it works. Okay. Now, when we go and add myelination to it, So in the um, peripheral nervous system, I'm not sure why I'm doing this part in this, sentence, this section, but whatever. In the peripheral nervous system, there is this myelination and it prevents the gates from opening. But there is this, op this unmyelinated, unmyelinated area called the nodes of Renvier. So the electrical charges, the gates are opening and closing at these nodes. And then it kind of jumps inside to the next area. And because you don't have to open up every single gate, you have the stimuli moving much faster. And as a result, the nervous impulse can move up to 120 meters per second, which um, 100 and so it's 60. 60 kilometers per hour, sorry, 60 miles per hour is a hundred kilometers. So that's going, um, 260, that's about 400 kilometers an hour. That's crazy. Anyway, very, very fast is how it's traveling. Okay, good. Now that was, um, very tricky. You need to understand the action potential before we continue on. Um, so make sure you take the time and review the action potential. Cause if you don't understand the action potential, once we get to the synapse, it'll be a little confusing. So I'm stopping this one here and hopefully my volume worked. If not, shut it off when, when the movie's going and watch the subscript or the captions.